So it's really looking at a holistic view of our corridors and how can we improve those. And again, never just not lasting for 40, 50 years, but can we go beyond that? And then with that, what are our impacts downstream of, of uh, stormwater or water main or um, the roadway itself? What parts of that can we make to really impact uh, and reduce our footprint in the future? Whenever you have an established transportation network, whether that be roads or railroads or waterways um, or public transportation, if those things are in place, that draws your businesses to want to locate where those new or updated or connected systems are. So in the last few years, there's been a huge emphasis on the complete streets, including bike lanes and pedestrian accesses in addition to just vehicles, and also taking into account the public transportations. Even beyond transportation engineering, uh, just understanding where you know taxes go to projects and how to get funding for that, and the different grants and loan opportunities there are to, to make your community better. So bringing in other aspects of uh, water quality and um, sustainability. You talk about materials in the transportation and bridge world and, where, and how we see that going forward. Part of what we've done with the GRS, IBS bridges is um, being able to cut down on time, cost, labor costs, machine rental costs, that, that all plays into that. I, I think the technology side is, is going to be the biggest change, you know, in the next next decade. I think as things continue in the digital trend, I think the paper plan sets that are, are deliverable now, you know, they might become a thing of the past. And I think it'll just be curated drafting drawings that are, are deliverable and projects can get built completely off of those. I've been in the industry for eight years now and I'm definitely excited to see where in eight years from now where it keeps going.